So Jacob agreed to work seven more years. A week after Jacob had married Leah, Laban gave him Rachel too. And Laban gave Rachel a servant, Billa, to be her maid. So Jacob slept with Rachel too, and he loved her more than Leah. He then stayed and worked an additional seven years. But because Leah was unloved, the Lord let her have a child. While Rachel was childless, so Leah became pregnant and had a son. His name was Reuben, for she said, The Lord had noticed my misery, and now my husband will love me. She soon became pregnant again and had another son, and his name was Simon. For she said, The Lord heard that I was unloved and has given me another son. Again she became pregnant and had a son. She named him Levi, and she said, Surely now my husband will feel affection for me, since I have given him three sons. But again, she became pregnant and had a son. She named him Judah. For she said, Now I will praise the Lord. And then she stopped having children. When Rachel saw that she wasn't having any children, she became jealous of her sister. Give me children or I'll die, she exclaimed to Jacob. Jacob flew into a rage. Am I God? He asked. He is the only one who is able to give you children. Then Rachel told him, Sleep with my servant, Billa, and she will bear children for me. So Rachel gave him Billa to be his wife, and Jacob slept with her. Billa became pregnant and presented him with a son. Rachel named him Dan, and she said, God has vindicated me. He has heard my request and given me a son. Then Billah became pregnant again and gave Jacob a second son. Rachel named him Naphtali. For she said, I have had an intense struggle with my sister and I am winning. Meanwhile, Leah realized that she wasn't getting pregnant anymore. So she gave her servant Zilpha to Jacob to be his wife. Soon Zilpha presented him with another son. Leah named him Gad. For she said, how fortunate I am. Then Zilpha produced a second son, and Leah named him Asher. For she said, What joy is mine? The other woman will consider me happy indeed. One day during the wheat harvest, Reuben found some mandrakes growing in a field and brought the roots to his mother Leah. Rachel begged Leah to give some of them to, to her, but Leah angrily replied, wasn't it enough that you stole my husband? Now you will steal my mandrake's roots too? Rachel said, I will let him sleep with you tonight in exchange for the mandrake roots. So that evening, as Jacob was coming home from the fields, Leah went out to meet him. You must sleep with me tonight, she said. I have paid for you with some mandrake roots my son had found. So Jacob slept with her. And God answered her prayers. She became pregnant again and gave birth to her fifth son. She named him Ishtar, for she said, God has rewarded me for giving my servant to my husband as a wife. Then she became pregnant again and had a sixth son. She named him Zabloon, for she said, God has given me good gifts from my husband. Now he will honor me and I have given him six sons. Later she gave birth to a daughter and named her Dina. And God remembered Rachel's flight and answered her prayer by giving her a child. She became pregnant and gave birth to a son. God has removed my shame, she said, and she named him Joseph. For she said, may the Lord give me yet another son. Soon after Joseph was born to Rachel, Jacob said to Laban, I want to go back home. Let me take my wives and children, for I have earned them from you, and let me be done on my way. You know I have fully paid for them with my service to you. Please don't leave, Laban replied, for I have learned by divination that the Lord has blessed me because you are here. How much do I owe you? Whatever it is, I'll pay it. Jacob replied, You know how faithfully I have served you through these many years and how your flocks and herds have grown. You have little indeed before I came, and your wealth has increased enormously. The Lord has blessed you from everything I do. But now, what about me? When should I provide for my own family? What wages do you want? Laban asked him. Jacob replied, 
don't give me anything at all. Just do one thing and I'll go back to work for you. Let me go out among your flocks today and remove all the sheep and goats that are speckled or spotted along with all the dark colored sheep. Give them to me as my wages. This will make it easy for you to see whether or not I have been honest. If you find in my flock any white sheep or goats they are, that are not speckled, you will know that I have stolen them from you. All right, Laban replied. It will be as you have said. But, the, but that very day, Laban went out and removed all the male goats that were speckled and spotted, the females that were speckled and spotted with any white patches and all the dark colored sheep. He placed them in the care of his sons and they took them three days distance from where Jacob was. Meanwhile, Jacob stayed and cared for Laban's flock. Now Jacob took fresh shoots from poplar, almond and plane trees and peeled off strips of the bark to make white streaks on them. Then he set up these peeled branches beside the watering trots so Laban's flock would see them as they came to drink for that was when they mated. So when the flocks mated in front of the white streaked branches, all of their offspring were streaked, speckled, and spotted. Jacob added them to his own flock, thus separating the lambs from Laban's flock. Then at mating time, he turned the flocks towards the streaked and dark colored rams in Laban's flock. This is how he built his flock from Laban's. Whenever the stronger females were ready to mate, Jacob set out the peeled branches in front of them. But he didn't do this with the weaker ones, so the weaker lambs belonged to Laban, and the stronger ones were Jacob's. As a result, Jacob's flock increased rapidly, and he became very wealthy with many servants, camels, and donkeys. But Jacob soon learned that Laban's sons were beginning to grumble. Jacob was Jacob has robbed our father, they said. All his wealth has been gained at our father's expense. And Jacob began to notice a considerable cooling in Laban's attitude towards him. Then the Lord said to Jacob, Return to the land of your father and grandfather and to your relatives there, and I will be with you. Jacob called Rachel and Leah out of the fields where they were watching the flocks so he could talk things over with them. Your father has turned against me and is not treating me like he used to, he told them. But the God of my father has been with me. You know how hard I have worked for your father, but he has tricked me, breaking his wage agreement with me again and again. But God has not allowed him to do to me any harm. For if he said the speckled animals were mine, the whole flock began to produce speckled uh, lambs. And when he changed his mind and said I could have the streaked ones, then all the lambs were born streaked. In this way, God has made me wealthy at your father's expense. During the mating season, I had a dream and saw that the male goats mating with the flock were streaked, speckled, and spotted. Then in my dream, the angel of God told me, Jacob, and I replied, yes, I'm listening. The angel said, Look, and you will see that only the shrieked, speckled, and spotted males are mating with the females of your flock. I have seen all that Laban has done to you. I am the God you met at Bethel, the place where you anointed the pillar of stone and made a vow to serve me. Now leave this country and return to the land that you come from. Rachel and Leah said, That's fine with us. There's nothing for us here. None of our father's wealths will come to us in any way. He has reduced our rights to those of foreign women. He sold us, and what he re received for us has disappointed. The riches God has given you from my father are legally ours and our children's to begin with. So go ahead and do whatever God has told you. So Jacob put his wives and children on camels. He drove the flocks in front of him all the livestock he had acquired at Padamaram and set out on his journey to the land of Can Canaan where his father Isaac lived. At the time they left Laban was some distance away shearing his sheep. Rachel stole her father's household gods and took them with her. They set out secretly and never told Laban that they were leaving. 
Jacob took all his possessions with him and crossed the Euphrates River, heading for the territory of Gilead. Laban didn't learn of their flight for three days, but when he did, he gathered a group of his relatives and set out in hot pursuit. He caught up with them seven days later in the hill country of Gilead. But the previous night, God had appeared to Laban in a dream. Be careful about what you say to Jacob, he was told. So when Laban caught up with Jacob, as he was camped in the hill county of Gilead, he set up his camp not far from Jacob's. What do you mean by sneaking off like this? Laban demanded. Are my daughter's prisoners the plunder of war? That you have stolen them away like this? Why did you slip away secretly? I would have given you a farewell party with joyful singing accompanied by tram uh, tambourines and harps. Why didn't you let me kiss my daughters and grandchildren and tell them goodbye? You have acted very foolishly. I could destroy you, but the God of your father appeared to me last night and told me, be careful about what I say to you. I know you feel you must go and you have longed for your childhood home, but why have you stolen my household gods? I rushed away because I was afraid, Jacob answered. I said to myself, he'll take his daughters from me by force, but as for your household gods, let the person who has taken them die. If you find anything that belongs to you, I swear before all these relatives of ours, I will give it back without question. But Jacob didn't know that Rachel had taken them. Laban went first into Jacob's tent to search there, then into Leah's, and then he searched the tents of the two concubines. But he didn't find the gods. Finally, he went into Rachel's tent. Rachel had taken the household gods and stuffed them into her camel saddle, and now she was sitting on them. So although Laban searched all the tents, he couldn't find them. Forgive my not getting up, father, Rachel explained. I'm having my monthly period. So despite this thorough search, Laban didn't find them. Then Jacob became very angry. What did you find, he demanded of Laban. What is my crime? You have chased me as though I was a criminal. You have searched through everything I own. Now show me what you have found that belongs to you. Set it out there in front of us before our relatives for all of us to see. Let them decide who is the real owner. 20 years I have been with you. And all that time I cared for your sheep and goats. So they produced healthy offspring. In all those years, I have never touched a single ram of yours for food. If any were attacked and killed by wild animals, did I show them to you and ask you to reduce the count of your flock? No, I took the loss. You made me pay for every animal stolen from the flocks, whatever the loss was, my fault or not. I worked for you through the scorching heat of the day and through cold and sleepless nights. Yes, 20 years, 14 of them earning your two daughters and six years to get the flock and you have reduced my wages 10 times in fact except for the grace of god the god of my grandfather abraham the awe inspiring god of my father isaac you would have sent me off without a penny to to my name but god has seen your cruelty and my hard work that is why he appeared to you last night and vindicated me then laban replied to jacob these women are my daughters, and these children are my grandchildren, and these flocks and all that you have are all mine. But what can I do now to my own daughters and grandchildren? Come now, and we will make a peace treaty, and you and I will live by it in, in its terms. So Jacob took a stone and set it up as a, a monument. He also told his men to gather stones and pile them up in a heap. Jacob and Laban then sat down beside the pile of stones to share a meal. They named it Witness Pile, which is Jigar Shadurth in Laban's language and Galid in Jacob's. This pile of stones will stand as a witness to remind us of our agreement, Laban said. This place was also called Mizpah. 